Please stand and face the procession. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Since we are gathered this Christmas Eve to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment to reflect on our sin and upon God's grace. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and you gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
Dear Pastor, we, the people of God, bid you to pray for the whole Christian church, that our Lord God would defend her against all assaults and temptations of the adversary and keep her perpetually on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, since you have revealed your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ, and in the word of his truth, keep, we ask you, in safety the works of your mercy, so that your church, spread throughout all the nations, may be defended against the adversary, and may serve you in true faith and perseverance in the confession of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray for all ministers of the word, for all vocations in the church, and for all the people of God. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive the supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all your servants in your holy church, that every member of the same may truly serve you according to your calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray for our catechumens that our Lord God would open their hearts and the door of his mercy, that having received the remission of all their sins by the washing of regeneration, they may be ever mindful of their baptism and evermore be found in Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray. Almighty God and Father, because you always grant growth to your church, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that rejoicing in their new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We pray. O merciful Father in heaven, because you hold in your hand all the might of man, and because you have ordained for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do well, all the powers that exist in all the nations of the world, we humbly pray you graciously to regard your servants, especially our President, the Congress of the United States, our Governor, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws that all who receive the sword as your ministers may bear it according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray that our Lord God Almighty would deliver the world from all error, take away disease, ward off famine, set free those in bondage, grant health to the sick, and a safe journey to all who travel. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak, may the prayers of those who in any tribulation or distress cry to you graciously come before you, so that in all their necessities they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray for all who are outside the church that our Lord God would be pleased to deliver them from their error, call them to faith in the true and living God and His only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and gather them into His family, the church. We pray. Almighty and everlasting God, because You seek not the death but the life of all, hear our prayers for all who have no right knowledge of You. Free them from their error, and for the glory of your name, bring them into the fellowship of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We, the people of God, bid you to pray for peace, that we may come to the knowledge of God's holy word and walk before him as is fitting for Christians. So we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, King of glory and Lord of heaven and earth, by whose spirit all things are governed, by whose providence all things are ordered, the God of peace and the author of all concord, 
Grant us, we implore you, your heavenly peace and concord, that we may serve you in true fear, to the praise and the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we, the people of God, bid you to pray for our enemies, that God would remember them in mercy and graciously grant them such things as are needful for them and profitable for their salvation. We pray. Almighty, everlasting God, through your only Son, our blessed Lord, you have commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. We therefore earnestly implore you that by your gracious visitation all our enemies may be led to true repentance and may have the same love and be of one accord and one mind and heart with us and with your whole Christian church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us all join our voices to pray for all those things which the Lord would have us pray by joining in the prayer that he taught us. Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor you have broken, as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do it. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Micah, chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there is no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch with, over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has, been, has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
A reading from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because He was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
this time, we'll bring forward our offerings. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the beginning, you created all things by your word, and in the fullness of time, your word became flesh. And he dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word made flesh dwell richly among us, that by his spirit we may receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks... He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, to one God, now and forever. Amen. During the lighting of the candles, I ask two things. You remember that uh, the lit candle stays upright, and the candle that is to be lit comes in on the angle. That way we do not spill any wax or have any accidents. The other thing is, at the end, when we extinguish them, I ask you to do it gently and, and not be overly enthusiastic at Christmas. So thank you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For our pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For 
for the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. Please extinguish your candles.
receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.